Here we go, it's last week at the auction, America's favorite top 10 list auction results from around the globe. All hands selected by me, Josh Levine, your host and guide to the world of auctions, and this is it for 2020 and season three. But don't be sad, because I got a great show for you today, and if you know me, I'm only gonna take a few weeks off from this show, and I'll keep tracking all the auction trends, and I'm gonna return with a vengeance. Plus, I'm developing a live show, and I'm gonna have new content for you every week as well. I had to make this a supersize edition just to hold you over. So without further ado, here's what happened last week at the auction. Only at an auction are you gonna find this one. Number 16 is a continental bronze mounted coconut pig that sold for $400 at Alex Cooper. Coconut pig, yes. It's the gift you get for a person that has everything. You know, people will really pay for the unique and unusual, that's for sure, and Porky Coco did not disappoint. You know, that's definitely a 2020 kind of lot if I ever saw one. Number 15 is a 1910 Hammond Multiplex typewriter that just hammered for $400 at Donley Auctions. Early examples of typewriters are very highly sought after. Find one that features the non-classic QWERTY key layout and you might have a real gem. Some of those can command several thousands of dollars. Number 14 is a shaving mug named to Myron A. Fuller that sold for $500 also at Donley Auction. Known as an occupational mug because it featured what the person did, this guy was obviously a telegraph operator, the more unusual or now defunct occupations are the mugs to really keep an eye out for. These and other shaving collectibles have like an underground following. I wonder if they have one for the Blockbuster employee. Anyway, number 13 is a Tom Turpin stamped wooden duck call that brought $625 at Heartland Artifact Auctions. Calls by this famed Memphis maker can fetch thousands of dollars depending on the desirability of the make and model. I bet that might be a new one for a lot of you pickers, so keep an eye out or an ear out for turkey and duck calls. Number 12 is the Pig Boy Carnival Sideshow Freak Display that sold for $1,300 at Tribal Gatherings. Circa 1930, this pleasantly disturbing circus or carnival sideshow freak display of the Pig Boy was a prop used to bring in freak show customers. The boy was advertised as a real baby, though this prop, it, it was a prop used for legal reasons. Apparently, you know, they couldn't use the real pig boy if there was one. But if you have a stuffed bat boy or gator girl in your attic, it might be time to sell it with prices like this. Carnival stuff is always in demand. Number 11 is a 1982 Hulk Hogan trading card that brought 1,800 bucks at Aldifer. Known as his rookie card and published by the Wrestling News Company, these are less than 40 years old and they're really heating up. Who would have thought, you know, I, you gotta start digging through your old toy box. You might have like Ric Flair or Andre the Giant or even this Hulk. You might have a few extra grand laying around. Number 10 is a Bucciolati Sterling Silver Domino set that just brought $2,250 at John Moran. I'm gonna keep reminding you to watch out for the big names in silver because this set was 25 ounces of silver, so really about $600 at today's $26 an ounce. But being Bucciolati, rare in a classic game, it commanded a premium. Don't just scrap your silver until you do your homework or ask an expert. Number nine is an eight inch tall Minton Majolica Monkey Bamboo base that did $4,000 at Alex Cooper. With its five to $700 pre-auction estimate, I'm sure both the seller and the auction house were very happy with this. Majolica is still sought after, but it's been fairly flat the past few years, but rare examples can still bring the big money. Watch out for the mint and mark stuff. They tend to be good, although there are several other makers to learn if you're interested in the genre. All right, number eight is a vintage shrunken head that just sold for $4,000 at Tribal Gathering. Pig Boy, now this. Yes, they had a crazy weird auction, if you can't tell. Anyway, the Amazonian tribes that practiced this ritual head shrinking, you know, they thought they were capturing the power of their enemies, and now the heads, you know, really capture bids. <laughs> so anyway, I just want you to know most of these heads you see on the market are facsimile heads. They're true to the period, but they were made from various leathers and real human hair, and they were sold as actual head to early travelers, but they were kind of duped. There are real ones out there, and they're extra gross, but the, all of them command big money. Okay, 
We've talked about error coins and stamps, but this one's currency. At number seven is an error 1918 inverted back $1 note that sold for $4,250 at one great deal. Known errors are highly sought after because most of them were caught and destroyed. Even modern errors can be quite valuable. And have a look, because the way they're handing out money these days, you know, they might make a mistake when they print some of it. Just a thought. All right, number six is a Victor 3 disc phonograph that sold for 4,500 bucks at Donnelly. Note the wooden horn. This is really what makes this one more rare and quite more valuable than other common Victors. Collectors love the wooden horns, and it's probably because they were only featured on the really deluxe models and above. And speaking of wood, pencil wood, at number five is an antique Dixon mechanical pencil that just shaved off $5,000 at Antique Arena. This circa 1885 example was fine and it had its original box. Check that out. These early examples are one of those things that a lot of pickers don't know about, kind of like early toasters, uh, brass blade fans, and some of the early hand tools. You know, there's always something new to learn in collectibles and a way to make a little extra money. But this genre needs no introduction. The Toy Train. Number four is a pre-war Lionel that just sold for $5,250 at Toys, Trains, and other old stuff. It was an SG Blue Comet 400E steam locomotive and it's beautiful tender. Trains as a genre have been somewhat flat over the years due to the baby boomers all seemingly selling their collections at the same time, which has been flooding the market a little bit, and throw in some lighter demand from the Gen Xers and the Millennials and you can see why prices would be down. It's Economics 101. But the good stuff, the pre-war and rare variants are still holding their own and in fact they're killing it. If you have the right ones, it might be time to call Wiley. Number three, a Chinese ox blood bowl just did $8,000 at Dumochelle. It was small, only six inches in diameter, but the color is quite desirable. It bore like that Quinlong seal that placed it somewhere in the 18th century. So take a good look though, because this ox blood color really might be something to keep your eyes peeled for. It's similar to the more desirable modern flambe red, which is also desirable. So if you're taking a gamble on a piece that you're buying in a state sale, yard sale, that might be something to know. And here's one that might have a future upside by a relatively unknown artist, or unknown as an artist. Number two is The Money Tree, a drawing by Donald Trump that sold for $8,500 at Leland Little. The seller originally purchased this celebrity doodle at a charity auction. It was only a eight and a half by 10 and a half, just a piece of paper with this doodle, but it was pre-president, so it was probably a good investment when he bought it at the time, and who knows if history will be kind to its future value. But you have to follow the art and ephemera of past presidents, and when you look at that, I think the future looks pretty bright for this piece. And speaking of the French Revolution, let's round out this supersized edition with something big money amazing. Number one is a pair of Jean Royer Grand Oeuf or Egg Lounge chairs that just sold for $140,000 at Wright. Actually, I think it's $175,000 with buyer's premium, but what's an extra $35,000 when you're spending $140,000 on two chairs, am I right? Basically made of oak and fur, and you've probably seen this style and design before, but these were the real deal. They bore the mark of his studio and had all their provenance. So here's what to know with that. Midmod still king, keep all your paperwork, original is the best, and knowledge is power. Wow, that was a lot of show, and thanks for watching and making last week at the auction a huge success. This, our first year on YouTube, we gained over 10,000 subscribers and had over 1 million views, so thank you again. If you're new and you enjoyed the show, before you go, subscribe below because I promise you more great content to come in 2021. In fact, I'm shooting more videos right after this one. Make sure you check out all the auction houses I talked about on today and every show. Many thanks to the Lucky Odds of San Antonio for allowing me to use their hit song, Whiplash, as the soundtrack this whole season, and I hope you boys are writing the theme song to season four. Until I see you guys again, or last week at the auction. My head it spins when you strut your stuff. That's how it begins when you strut your stuff. As you turn my way, when you strut your stuff. Man, it makes my day when you strut your stuff. Walking down the street, you strut your stuff. Man's giving.